Divine Truth Assistance Group. Group Assistance Sessions Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action. This recording is from the Understanding God's Loving Laws Group and is part of an Education in Love series. In the Session 2 Reminders and Homework Review Presentation, Mary works through reminders from the previous Order Principles session and reviews the homework, recorded on the 25th of November 2016 in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. Well, welcome this morning onto our last two days of this group. And I was just mentioning how a lot of you feel quite subdued this morning. Yeah, it was the same in the previous group. Uh, that this day was a real struggle for a lot of people. A lot of people went to sleep, like at one point nearly half the audience. So, <laughs> and, and actually what we're going to present today is really crucial stuff. It's stuff that um, if you can open up, grasp it and understand it, it will stand you in good stead for eternity, really. <laughs> So, um, yeah, it's just worth having a little feel about what's happening for you today. Obviously, there's some influence um, on everyone. Does anyone, does anyone feel nervous? Yeah, so a few of you. Who just feels tired? Only a few of you. What's another feeling? <laughs> um, <laughs> Marie, yeah, discombobulated, yeah. So she's overwhelmed. Are you overwhelmed by everything that's happened, you've heard so far? Yeah. Something I was going to mention to you guys this morning is that remember that this is your first sort of introduction to all of these principles and concepts. So you can't give yourself too hard a time if it's feeling overwhelming. We know we've hit you, by now we've hit you with 12 individual principles, and we're going to add to that again in this coming session. So it's, it's all right to feel like overwhelmed or whatever. Realise that it's going to take some time. And if you think about our next three groups following this one, they're all going to be working around these same principles. Because by now you're learning when you break the principle, you sin. Our next two groups are about understanding sin and removing the causes of sin. And then the group after that is about engaging God's loving laws. So this is, if you can go away from this group and really work on kind of taking in what each principle was about and beginning to experiment, as we're going to talk about in the homework, a lot of these reflections are good if you can start to have these reflections in, in your day-to-day -day life. Am I breaking a principle right now? Or what, is this like that principle in action or, or whatever? If you can do that in the, in the coming months and year, that will really help you when you come back here again with us. Yeah, so don't give yourself too hard a time. And if you can, but if you can stay present with us, It'll be worth it. <laughs> I say that in all humility. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus is going to talk to you about will and desire. And you'll have already seen that a lot of, we've been foreshadowing a lot of that information, haven't we, all the way through the group. So you're beginning to see just the importance of it um, just through that process. And um, yeah, and I found last, last week the desire discussion very inspiring. So. If you can stay present, drink your water, have a breeze and just feel what's going on. Yeah, awesome. All right, let's get on to, we're really not quite into session three yet. We've got to review what we did in session two and talk about your homework. So let's have a look. What I'm going to do with you is look at the reminders of each presentation. So remember we had some non-principal presentations. I'd love to hear from you guys what you remember about those two presentations that we had, the law-related attitudes and emotions and the human law hangover, just very briefly so we get a reminder again. Um, and then what I'm going to do, rather than talk through a big review of the principle with you, is like we did in our last homework revision, hear from you guys about how you feel you're in or out of harmony with the principle. And in a way, that's sort of reminding us all what the principle's all about, isn't it? When we get to responsibility principles, I'm going to ask you those additional questions. All right. So, again, we just keep reminding you of this conceptual diagram. 
Actually, this is the last time you're going to see it in this form because in our next, in my next presentation to you after this one, we're going to be adding a layer. But it's really good if you, by now, have a have a good idea or have a good grasp of that concept of the the God's char God's character and nature is really governing everything that's happening. It's the principles that reflect the nature, the laws are in harmony with the principles, and then all of creation within this hierarchy that we learned about in the last session is governed by all of that. So does everyone feel kind of relaxed with that now? That's great, because we're going to add to it. It won't be, um, we won't be disagreeing with anything we've already presented, but we will add to it in the next session. All right. So remember our order principles were all about how the human soul fits into the universe? And a lot of you reflected to me, yep, I'm starting to get a bit of an idea about that. But also we looked at, you know, the effect that we have as a human soul on all the creations below us in the hierarchy, but in general on the whole universe. And in this coming session, you're going to learn more about your potentials to have more of an effect, which is pretty exciting. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so we've covered that and we'll go now into detail about how we did that. So what were the principles we discussed? You can call them out. What was our first one? Hierarchy. After that, governance. Responsibility. Yep. And the final one, compensation. And remember, we talked about how everything is building upon everything we've previously presented. So all of these principles really were built on the order principles. They're all re the order principles are all reflected in these principles, aren't they? And then we learnt how hierarchy, uh, well, way back in the first session, scope really made way for hierarchy, didn't it? made hierarchy possible, and then governance was related to hierarchy, responsibility was as a result of this governance, and compensation was a way of educating us, wasn't it, about this whole process. Yeah. All right. What were our two presentations we did? Can you remember? I just mentioned them earlier. The law-related attitudes and emotions and the hangover. All righty. So let's talk about those presentations. Now, before I do that, what do you guys remember from the attitudes and emotions discussion? What did you come away with thinking about? Any thoughts, Barbara? That my current emotional condition is still dictating to me that God is wrathful and punishing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so you started to identify some of those attitudes, yes. Uh, Karen, Karen, here. Um, pretty much any single emotion I have to the law makers and forces um, is every single one of those um, emotions towards those people that are out of harmony with love, I'm going to be directing at God. So yeah. I need to yeah, work through yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a lot about what we wanted to highlight to you guys. Excellent. If we go to Fabio and we'll come to Karen on this side. Um, uh, got stuck is that I need to have the same attitude to the law as God does. Yeah. If I don't have the same attitude to the law as God does, I'm never going to grow closer to God, am I? I'm never going to be at one with God because uh, we're, we're in different pages, we're in different books, we're in different libraries. <laughs> yeah. Karen? I was um, fairly sobered by learning that my emotions are so much more important than my actions. Yeah, yeah. And we, we can talk more about in the, that in your homework as well, hey, because that really comes through in these principles. All right, let's look at our slide. This is going from what Fabio said. If humans are to become at one with God, they need to have the same attitudes and emotions about God's laws that God has. And then we sort of followed that with the idea that basically when we're sinning, when we're out of harmony with these principles, we're automatically sinning. And that's where our pain and suffering comes from. So they were some of the key points from that presentation. We talked about these attitudes and emotions from childhood. 
at being imposed upon authority. And that's another point that I just wanted to, to revise with you guys, because often we think, oh, it's because society's messed up and our criminal justice system is messed up. But remember Jesus had some good discussion with you in the Q&As on this as well about the fact that, well, no, really all of us are predisposed to creating systems because, that are like that because of this childhood experience with authority. Yeah. All right. And that creates the human law hangover. Now, what do you guys remember from the, from the hangover? <laughs> if we go to Barbara again and Lani. Um, while I continue to treat my laws um, above God's laws and don't honour God's laws, I will continue to be in pain and suffering. Yes, yes, just as we highlighted, yep. And Lani? Um, the, yeah, it feels good at the time. You think you're getting away with it penalties are massive yes and remember i carried on about being drunk and you know where we think we're invincible and we think we're tough and we think we've got it all figured out when we're under that influence don't we and then and so we don't think there's going to be any consequence and then it hits us and a lot of times then we want to avoid that and so just like we do with alcohol here on earth, we go, well, a week's gone by. I'll just forget all about how painful that hangover was. I'll go and do it again because I want to avoid some more. And that's often what's happening, isn't it? Yeah. All right. So there's this big difference between God's law and human law. And as Karen said earlier, this hangover, every one of these hangovers we have about human law we're actually putting on to God and it prevents that relationship. And each sin creates more pain and suffering for humans individually and collectively. So it's not just our own personal pain, we're affecting everyone around us as well. All righty. So, well, that was all right, huh? Let's get on to our homework. So our first principle that we talked about was hierarchy. And remember, this is all the, the hierarchy <coughs> principles determine a hierarchy of law and a hierarchy of creation, don't they? And this is where we talk more about our inbuilt rules, our external rules, all of those things going on. But they really ensure that governance can occur. So what did you guys have some... Who felt that they had an example of where they're in harmony with the governance principles? Oh, sorry, hierarchy. <laughs> Nobody. That's good because uh, <laughs> whether it's governance or hierarchy, I'm getting a nobody vibe, so all right. <laughs> Paul, you've got your hand up. Was that in harmony? Yep. Yeah, it's seeing that I'm um, God's um, greatest creation in the hierarchy of his creations. Yes. Do you feel that, do you reckon? Uh, um, at times, oh, I think I do. You reckon you do? All right. And do you, you, we've got to be careful as well because sometimes we feel like the highest of God's creations above all of others' highest go of God's creations. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. That is an important way that a lot of us resist being in harmony with this principle, isn't it, by not acknowledging that fact. Yeah. All right. So who had some examples out of harmony? If we go to Joanne and Monique after her. I still feel like when I get sick or have an accident or pain that it's due to something outside of myself. Yeah, that's an excellent example. Yeah, and we're not seeing that they, we've got all these inbuilt rules and being the highest of God's creations as well, what, what's happening to us physically is governed by a lot of laws and we want to blame externally. Yeah, all right, Mon? Um, just that I've got the hierarchy all upside down. So I'm, I've put myself, well, as a kid, I was put as the authority and supreme. Now I'm, I'm still putting myself there and God is under me Yeah. and everyone else. Yes. Under me. And, um, so, and, and the laws don't even exist for me. They only exist for others. Yeah. And um, the principles are um, only my creations, but everyone needs to abide by my... <laughs> principles and laws that yeah yeah so it's all messed up yeah it's a yeah. good reflection i think a lot of us have that feeling that really we should be a law unto ourselves and god comes underneath us in the hierarchy really and a lot of us live our life that way don't we yeah 
All right, who had another example? Catherine? I did mine in physical, emotional, spiritual, like you said. So this is the, apart from all other things, how much love was used for the creation of all things. I now know how much I have taken all of God's creation for granted, never really realising how much destruction I was causing by my actions, treating the land and animals, etc., for my benefit and use. I thought I loved animals and the land, but now realise I have no idea what love was. Mm, yeah, yeah. Catherine, for people who don't know, comes from a large farming background. He had a huge sheep station, wasn't it? It wasn't that huge. It wasn't that huge. It's huge, but it's huge for me, country girl who grew up on 10 acres. Yeah, it's pretty, it's a lot bigger than that. It's a lot more sheep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good reflection, hey? If we come to Pierre, you had your hand up, didn't you? Yeah. Um, I'm feeding um, monsters and I feel um, angry women and men are more powerful than me and I want to, I don't want to take responsibility, I feed them and then I want other to feed my monsters. Yeah. So sometimes I'm above, sometimes I feel under yeah. other. Uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. yeah. Awesome, thank you. And this is where some of our principles start to come together, don't they, with uh, governance and responsibility, yeah. Yep. So if we come to Alwyn and then to Lani, and on this side to Claudia, please. Um, the feeling that my limited development has so terribly affected all the creatures below and around me, including I've been thinking about things like little bird mites and lice and, and how they are all, always suffering because of that, you know? Yeah, yeah. That, and this is, again, that's a lot about governance and we talk some more okay. about that in governance, but oh. you're right. It's because we're higher in the hierarchy, we have that effect. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh, who's next? Claudia, and if we go back to Lani, yeah. I refuse to see the actual and the potential power of my own soul so that I can avoid change, emotion and especially fear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a big way we want to oppose all of these principles in the second session, Is, wasn't it? Hierarchy, governance, responsibility. I just want to deny it even exists so then I don't have to take responsibility for what's going on. Yeah, yeah, very good. Lani? Um, for me, it, um, I really realised how I am a part of um, creation, um, whereas I thought I was separate. There was all creation there and then there was me. Yes. So I, I got, I am totally interconnected with all living parts. My feelings, attitudes and desires have a direct impact and influence on the hierarchical system. I have not been aware of the damage and regress I am inflicting on creation. I'm impeding evolution when I'm in fear. Yeah, yeah, very true, very true. This principle is a lot about the interconnectedness of everything. And a lot of us want to resist, we want to resist even the intellectual knowledge about that, don't we? And that puts us in opposition with this principle. Even a lot of us feel very kind of, sort of almost angry or smug about our resistance to maths and science when really maths and science lays it all out there for us a lot, doesn't it? But a lot of us are like, we're not even ashamed. It's funny, isn't it? Um, when, we, when someone can't read or write, there's often a lot of shame associated with that. Unwarranted shame, but a lot of people feel shameful about that. But a lot of us, myself included, uh, up until recently, feel like almost like, oh, maths, yeah, I'm not good at it. It's, it's no worries, that's just me, you know, there's not even a, a feeling of the sin of like feeling, you know, rejecting of, remember Jesus taught us it's one of the primary ways that God can communicate with us. Yeah, so that's out of harmony with this principle. I'll just have a look at some of the other ones I, I wrote. Yeah, the resistance to God's authority in creating hierarchy, that God can create hierarchy and has done so. And a lot of us, as Joanne alluded to, believing we can overcome spiritual issues with physical remedies. You know, we have a pain in our foot and really that's a reflection 
of something else going on, but we think, oh, no, I can overcome the inbuilt rules inside of me and just take a Panadol or something, and it'll fix it. Yeah. Believing that love of lower creations exclu excuses harsh treatment towards higher creations. Can you see that? A lot of people have their cat. Their cat is like their prince, you know, and everyone else must, like, obey the, the wishes of the prince. So it's okay to project cranky at your mum who comes to visit who doesn't honour your cat, but who's, you know, how does that work? You know, the cat's even a lower creation, and yet, and so, we, but we feel like, oh, I can be cranky at mum who's actually a higher creation than my cat. You know, all angry vegans, which to me is an oxymoron, you know, and all this kind of thing where people go, no, I'm going to save the environment. I might murder four people to do it. But, you know, and it is, <laughs> you can't really say that that's love, can you? And it's also way out of harmony with this hierarchy, it, an emotional acknowledgement of the hierarchy. Yeah, yeah. All right. Remember Jesus talked to us in the hierarchy discussion about certain laws being higher in the hierarchy than others. And he talked about, again, this difference between will and desire, that the, the laws based on desire are higher in the hierarchy. But a lot of us want to focus on our will and ignore developing desire. But if we really felt this principle, we would know that actually, if I... If I work on desire, I'm engaging a higher set of laws. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay, let's go on to our next one. Governance. So, this one's all about God's authority. Everything's under God's authority. And the, it, this principle in itself ensures that law made by God governs everything. But we also introduce this idea that we get to share in that governance. So what were your reflections on this one? If we go to Lorleen on this side, and if we come to Max on the other. Instead of living in God's generous governance and sharing myself and my nature, I do the opposite by living in fear. I contract everything. And, it, and its functions, like the wheel cog, is stopping and turning the other way. I take from myself and everything around me, and in this downward spiral, I give away whatever power I have um, in loving governance away to those who are a fear and give them more governance over me and everyone around me. Mm. So this is this issue that Jesus raised, wasn't it, about how we give our power of governance to other people. Because remember, what was the thing that determines the, our power of governance? Whether it's more development, wasn't it? And yet often we're giving our power away to people in lower development than ourselves just because of a single issue. I don't want to feel fear, yeah, for example. Or I really want my addiction met right now, yeah. All right, who is next? Max, yep. Um, whenever I feel entitled to something like sex. Yeah. And I'm putting myself above. Yep, you're putting yourself above. You say, I should have governance in this situation. Mm. I'm entitled to yeah. it. Yeah, awesome. Okay, if we come to Rachel on that side, and who, who's in the back there? Kathy, yep. Um, I, I don't actively destroy create my creations that are out of harmony with God's love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I wait until they sort of they get so bad that I have to confront it. But, yeah, I'm not reflecting and seeking out that, yeah, God's authority. Yeah, that's, that's a beautiful reflection because, remember, we have governance over the things that we create that, are out, that have none of God's... Part, no part of God's creation within them. So all of our sin, all of our damaging relationships and things, no one's, God's laws are operating to destroy it, but really we, we've got the governance there. And if we're not trying to sort of bring ourselves more in harmony with God's love and laws and acknowledging our own governance, yeah, we're yeah. out of harmony with the principle. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Kathy, yep. Um, having... Um Having a child 
without the ability to educate him in harmony with God's laws or and having it him for more selfish reasons and not even considering that. Yeah, yeah. Or, or would you say having a child in order to govern in the order child? To govern. Yeah. <laughs> Which is yeah, remember we we learned yeah. that really our job as a parent is not to govern the child, is it? Mm. It's mm. to is to help when we're in harmony with God's love and law. We want to educate that child mm. about God's love and law. Yeah. Then make him mold him into yeah. Yeah. What I needed exactly in my life yeah 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 Yeah. all right uh who is next i haven't said who's next if we go to hunter and marie not acknowledging that governance is something we do collectively like sometimes people ask me uh well what do you think of how things are going with earth and i'm like it's pretty messed up i think we're you know can't help ourselves and not acknowledging that i'm part of the pro, you know, part of how things are are on earth. Yes, yeah, it's a great reflection, and it's something that I'll talk more about. We have to go to Marie. I'll talk a bit more about that. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Hunter. Marie, I willfully feed my addictions, and in a demanding tantrum style that, you know, I would make out is governance, but you know, it's actually willful, destructive anarchy. Yeah. Yeah. So just, uh, even though this principle says we can't have anarchy, we kind of we're try- we're fighting it so much to to really our will is really I want the anarchy because I'll get more of what we think I'll get more of what I want. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So some of the things that uh, I noted down here, and it sort of uh, goes on from what Hunter said is that we have automatic power of governance over creation. We've learned that now. Even if we're in quite a low condition, we have that power of governance. And actually, our, if we are in a low condition, our environment will start to reflect that as an extension of our governance, as a reflection of our governance. And yet, how many of us try then to overcome or control or stop or make pretty our external environment rather than actually dealing with the development that would naturally cause it to improve. It's a big way we we ignore this principle, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Jesus was saying to me, like, we we have to work hard because governance is low, our condition is low and our governance is reflecting it. And we don't realise that if we we developed ourselves, we wouldn't have to work as hard. It's such a good reflection, isn't it, you know? Uh, we don't recognise that when, as we develop, people, a lot of people will naturally just feel more drawn into a cooperative effort with us. And we don't see that God's laws will, will be in harmony with them. So even spirit friends can really help us in what we do. And, and the environment won't be like trying to struggle back from, you know, recovering from our exerted governance. It'll feel like flourishing. So all of these things are ways that we're not very logical, are we? We don't think that way. And that's why it's good to learn about the principle because you can start to think, now, hang on, what's the better use of my time? What's the more economical use of my time? Go and weed the garden for the hundredth time or, (laughs) you know, work on my development. That's a very kind of a menial example, but if you think about it, it affects everything, you know. A lot of us have low governance because of the state of our development, but then we try and get other people to, to help us you know, get things done by force almost, you know. We try and enlist others rather than letting them come feeling desirous of coming. We try and get a big group together to get a thing done without realising, hey, if I just developed, that things would happen much more easily and flow, flow better. And that's, that's, you see that happening a lot on Earth, don't you? Yeah. Where there's a, there's, there might even be a really positive goal in mind, but because people aren't dealing with their actual condition in love, their, their development, their spiritual development, it takes a lot of effort and it seems like they're continually having setbacks. When really, if they dealt with their development, 
things would go more smoothly. Yeah. Yeah. And really, we're ignoring God. God's, remember, God's trying to educate us about this power of governance. And when we work against it and try and overcome it, we're actually ignoring that education, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. All right. Just have a look at the other ones that I had written down here. Yeah. I said, trying to govern with physical actions which are in opposition to the governance our soul is exerting in the opposite direction. So that's what I was just speaking to you about. A lot of us are giving governance to people in a lower condition, as we've mentioned. But on the flip side, what I notice is a lot of people resist love, re resist guidance of people who are clearly in a position of more development, either because that person challenges their fear or doesn't meet an addiction of some kind. And then what I notice with you guys is like often, you know, you're in here, not a word is spoken. Friday night was like that. You know, no hands raised far out. This is full on. We've just arrived and now we're like talking about all this heavy stuff. Um, you know, everyone was just sat there like little scaredies. And then as soon as we opened the door, everyone was outside chatting away. It was at the, at the end of the evening, it was like you're all long lost buddies. And, and it's really interesting, isn't it? You didn't want to engage with the person who was trying to lovingly guide you to more truth. But gee whiz, you were happy to engage with each other. <laughs> Sorry, that's, that's a way that we're not, we're not working with the governance principle. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay, let's go on to our really important section, which is about responsibility. So we had three or four questions in this section, didn't we? So let's have a look at the first one. How am I living in or out of harmony with the responsibility principles? Did it, yeah, if we go to Elvira and Laura on this side. Thanks, Pete. Um, my initial response was, oh, thank God you don't get a role until, you know, <laughs> and then I thought, oh my God, that, that's just me going into fear because I do not, I'm terrified to find out my nature and so it was a great excuse for me to use for me to not confront my fear. Yeah, so it's a way that you, you're you almost saying, I because you have this pre-existing feeling, I don't want to know my nature, then you go, yeah, good, no roles for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like I manipulated the truth to, to mask my fear. To support the injury. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, who was next? Laura. And if we come to Sandra on this side, and after Laura we'll go to Maxine. No, it's Katrina. Sorry, yeah. So um, I've been avoiding truth and using my confusion um, which is really a, a lack of desire for truth yeah. um, as an excuse to remain in an unloving state of fear, um, which I don't even see a problem with yet. Yeah. Like I actually still feel like that's a loving space to be in. It's like safe, you know. Um, yeah, so, and it, yeah, my feeling is that it, it keeps me safe and it prevents me from harm. Yeah. Um, which is just a false idea of love, isn't it? Yeah. yeah so. It's also a false idea of reality, actually. Yeah, it's totally yeah. self-delusional. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, um, and unwillingness to accept God's truth. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. Cool. <laughs> and, and remember that it's a good reflection because responsibility principles are all about teaching us accountability and enforcing accountability. And when we go, oh, I'm just so confused, I don't have any idea, I can't figure anything out, we're just really avoiding that whole process, aren't we? Yeah, it just yeah. seems so silly. Yeah. <laughs> Like it's yeah. so illogical. And actually we make ourselves really open to dangerous influences in that yeah. place as well because we, we don't want to take responsibility so much that we're like, oh, really? Okay, I'll do what you reckon yeah. to the, whoever it is and it could be someone who's really willing to exploit our, our injuries. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Thanks, Laura. <laughs> uh, yep. Uh, I just have this huge um, demand on people to take responsibility for all of my life like not just physically but emotionally really like just projecting I want you to save me I want I demand all these things that just completely lack of responsibility on any level really yeah and that even penetrates through physical life you know like demanding jobs demanding 
everything like it's really insidious like yeah yes yeah. yeah I noticed that a lot of people have a lot of problems with responsibility and a lot of it is does relate to how we were raised and if if we were taught to feel like other people should be responsible for making my desires happen or you know I can have a desire but other people should pick it up and meet it without me having to say anything or um I don't have to be responsible to feel my emotions on my own. You guys should share in it with me. And it becomes very big demand. We become takers. When we break this principle, we become takers from the environment rather than being creative forces good, for good and givers. Yeah. Yeah. And suppress in that, I also find that I suppress other people's nature as a result. Definitely. Because I'm angry and demanding and condescending and I'm suppressing God-given nature, so I'm suppressing God's expression of yeah. God on earth. Like, it's just full on like when you actually look at the whole thing. Yeah. yeah, it's really good to look at the whole thing because you can start to see, wow, okay, this is the work I need to do if I'm going to get in harmony with God's laws. Yeah, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yep, yeah. uh, Katrina, and then if we come forward to Nicholas after Katrina. I avoid responsibility in my life because I want someone to rescue me um, from my pain, my suffering and my bad decisions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of us have that, uh, you know, this desire. Okay, we'll go to Nicholas. Yeah, it's about to um, being more firm with myself on such like uh, having facade and like having the desire to have no facade at all. It's like uh, like a desire, I'm not uh, always doing that, but of course, and then it will prevents me from accepting like no, no loving relationships, you know, or even when work with people, and then I don't have my facade. I'm still, I don't know how to say, in, in, looking inside of me, you know, and I think this, yeah, so being more firm about yeah. it and be responsible. Being more responsible for deconstructing your facade, yeah, is that what you mean? Facade yes. and even have, bringing more love in. in and I didn't like. I'm not um, feeling the compensa compensation effect. So yep. I say, it's okay if I don't have. I, I don't have love relationship with people, you know. But it's not. Mm -hmm. So I really have to be m much more firm with myself and say, okay, I even not accepting s stuff from others. Also, it's really taking so much stuff. Yeah. yeah. So being firm for principles inside of yourself. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. All right. If we go to Kerry, and then I'll mention a few. Um, just not wanting to, or wanting to deny past mistakes and justify them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one of the ones I had written down was sort of like, because remember, this is operating on our thoughts, our attitudes, our ideas, our beliefs. You know, a lot of us go, well, yeah, I think pretty badly of a certain group or I, I judge that person or my attitude is really not that loving. But everyone's the same, you know everyone else is like it so it's okay you know we avoid our responsibility for that yeah all right yeah it, we it's really this principle is a lot if to look at your desire and intention for your actions there's still this big temptation to look at our actions but what's motivating it because that's what God's laws are operating upon yeah, and resisting accountability that you guys have brought up really well. So let's have a look at these other questions. Did, who had some good reflections about how they're resisting their nature? Hmm. Nobody? Karen? Uh, just because I'm so much in my facade and addictions, I want some of my facade to be my nature. So I'm never going to discover <laughs> what it really is when I want it to be yeah. Yeah, some of my facade. Yeah, excellent. I think a lot of us feel, well, that's why we have it, isn't it? We have a facade yeah. because we feel like this is a better version than my actual nature. So I've got to hold on to this thing. But part of this role responsibility, as Jesus really nicely pointed out to us at the end the other day, was is desiring that nature. Yeah, yeah. All right. If we go to Neil behind you and come to Eloisa on that side. Uh, if I'm not actively pursuing knowing my nature, then yep. I'm sinning. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm going way off track. You know, yeah. Then I've got to do that. Yeah. You know, that's, yeah. that's important. Yeah, it's, it's a good reflection, hey? Yep. Mm. 
um, I've noticed that I'm pulling my own nature down mm. before someone else can a lot. Mm. Sort of this self-protection that's not really nice to ourselves, is it? Double pain. Yeah, yeah. All right. So what about this idea of self-responsibility? Who has some thoughts about that? What do I think it means to be fully self-responsible? If we go to Nikki and back to Paul there. Yeah. So just the... Um, like the main or the most important things are like the physical things, so job, money, shelter, food, clothing, and then like not necessarily putting more importance on the spiritual stuff and your emotional condition and soul-based things. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. Did anyone else have a reflection like that? Just where you you're really trying trying sort of to be responsible for all this physical stuff. Because that's what you taught was a good girl or boy, um, you know, pay the bills, pay the rent, pay the mortgage, go to work nine to five, do the responsible thing. When really we're not being responsible for our emotions, for what's coming out of us, what we're demanding, what you know, how we want everyone to feel about us doing these things, and that's all uh, in opposition to really the self responsibility principle. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let me go back to this slide because we can talk about it a bit more. Yep. And Paul. Um, desiring the truth of myself in relation to God's truth yeah. of, of my intentions, my all that stuff. Yes. Yeah, it's a big way we're out of harmony with self-responsibility, isn't it? This is so crucial. We talked about to seek truth, love and understanding of all of and self-awareness of ourself. And a lot of us are resisting that a lot, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. If we come to Igor and Laura... Uh, realization that self responsibility is really my power. It's a control of my life, and if I don't engage that, I, I'm becoming powerless, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. It's sort of it's it's the rever remember Laura said, you know, I think this is the best and safest place for me to be to just be confused and like, oh, I don't understand, and you know, I'm just an innocent kind of. A lot of us have those sort of emotions, and I didn't know, and you know, uh, I didn't know I should even want to know, and all of that sort of thing. And we think that that makes us more innocent or or more please pleasing other people. When, as Igor points out, this is how we harness our development this is our power this is our ability to really be an active part of god's creation that's that's in harmony with god and god's desires yeah yeah cool uh laura yeah i was just really because my vision's been quite blurry this year for the first time so i'm right there's something right in front of me and then i just started noticing every day the little things and my daughter has a teddy bear that makes her feel safe she's had it her whole life and i've just realized that it's a complete lack of my self-responsibility for not feeling the things that actually make her feel unsafe. And I've put on a teddy to do that role for me. Yeah, yeah, rather than be responsible for For, for why she inside. feels safe, unsafe yeah. in the first place. Yeah. yeah, cool. All right, we just have two more reflections just on anything you felt about the responsibility principles and then we'll move on to compensation. Okay, if we go to Rani, let's go to a few people we haven't heard from. And to Courtney. Um, I started to realise that re like with responsibility, I've believed it's a chore and that it actually could be fun and yeah. enjoyable and it might be empowering, inspiring and all these other things. Yeah, yeah, nice reflection. It is actually. When we start to enter this state where we desire these things, there might be a bit of pain. There might be a few like, oh, wow, I'm going to have to reassess my my idea of who I am or how awesome I am sometimes. <laughs> but because we're engaging with the way that God created us to be, you know, this desirous, passionate sort of a, a creation, um, and we're wanting to bring, remember, desire is the higher law. There's more compensation for the desire than for the will, the positive compensation, I mean. So we do actually end up having more fun. It's good, you know, there's more happy times. <laughs> what I notice is a lot of people hear divine truth and they're like, oh, you know, oh, more truth, oh, you know, oh, gosh, everything I thought was good, every way I thought I had fun, it's all sin, you know. Um, 
But that's because the desire is not yet engaged to know it and to change it. Because once that desire is actually a part of you, then even though there's a few, <laughs> you know, there's a lot more joy that happens. Yeah. All right, we'll go to Courtney finally. Um, that there's an, been, I've had an investment in not developing or not wanting the self-responsibility in order to avoid fears and in particular what other people might do, how they might react. Yeah. 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 Great reflection. Anyone else have that realisation? Yeah. 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 All right. Awesome, you guys. Let's talk about our last principle. Compensation. This was like the icing on the cake, wasn't it, of the, the three previous principles. This is where it all kind of comes into synergy and, and where we get the chance to be educated about sin. This, all the operations of this principle teach us about sin and also show us that we're compensated in both directions. There's positive compensation and then painful compensation as well. So who had some thoughts about how they're breaking that principle? If we go to Denise and then Eloisa. So God measures attitude, not action. So with my poor attitude, doing things for what I got out of them, the sense of worth, money, or because I wanted to do something different, wanting to feel special or better than someone else, judgment, thinking it is okay to project anger at others in the environment, and getting a sense of justice, power, and righteousness, etc. So, yeah. yeah, God's in the negative measures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. all those things are out of harmony with... Well, God's going to be trying to teach you, isn't she? She's going to teach you that, oh, my attitude is the thing here. Oh, my motive, this, I've got more pain. There must be something that I'm missing here. So rather than thinking of it like punishment, no, this is an education process. Yes, there's a lot of hope. There's a lot of hope. All right, uh, hello? Um. In brief, I realised that without compensation, my life would be a super terrible mess. Yeah, you know, why is that? Because I've been so busy fighting for my error and continuing to sin and create more pain that I missed out on being sensitive to the loving and pleasurable rewards it brings. Yeah. When I have experimented with lo being loving and truthful in a sincere way, I've encountered a lot of joy and happiness, possibilities and desire, which seems to be automatically generated when in harmony with law, or maybe it's just... Um, genuinely engaging a desire. I'm not sure yet. The contrast <laughs> is fear and restriction and feeling terrible about myself and in a lot of pain and insecurity, which is the compensation for not living in harmony with God's laws or acting out my loving desires. And God's way, which when engaged passionately, and I mean passionately, it has to be, is truly the way to happiness and wonder. Yeah, yeah, lovely. It's very true, hey? It's, it's such a way that we can see the the path to god compensation helps us because before we even have a a proper desire the pain is educating us and if we can understand that and start to use that to say okay where's my desire at how can i generate a more a desire more in harmony with god's way then as eloise's experience life just gets better <laughs> yeah all right if we go to rebecca and joanne Um, I had a lot of thoughts of like why I needed you guys to tell me where things were at when I've got God's given me all of these capabilities and all this compensation and I guess it's self-responsibility too and it's everything. Yes. Um, and I was like, why did I need Jesus to give me that truth? Why did I not, why could I not see when God's given me every opportunity? So I, and yeah. So that was a big, I'm ignoring all the compensation by not seeing. Yeah. It's an awesome reflection, Rebecca. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It is a part of our responsibility as well. A lot of us are avoiding responsibility by wanting someone else to make us self-aware. How can someone else make me self-aware? It's sort of, you know, oh, tell me what's my injury. Tell me... Tell me what the loving thing is to do. Tell me. And all of that is avoiding developing self-responsibility. And you're right, we must be ignoring a lot of compensation that's trying to educate us if, we, if we're in that state. Yeah. Okay, Joanne. I realize that when I do obey the laws, like whether they're human or God's laws, 
I'm only obeying the laws because I'm so afraid of being punished. Yeah. So um, here I am obeying the laws thinking, that, oh, that's a good thing, but it's not because it's all fear-based. So that, that's been really huge for me. Yeah. Um, real huge, because I'm afraid of punishment and just, yeah. but fear, huh, yeah. fear. It's an awesome reflection because through the workings of compensation, God's going to try, be trying to help you to, to feel that fear, to correct that injury in you. And yeah, and so often a lot of us can get really angry going through life, like, I always did the right thing. Why am I still in pain? You know, when often it's, we're not looking at this motivation that's driven those actions. Yeah. Awesome, you guys. You really. So good in this one. Uh, if we go to, uh, who was next? Did I say someone? No. We go to Wayne and we come back to Laura and then we need to probably finish. Yeah. I don't consider God's laws have a compensation of higher magnitude than human law. Mm. Yeah. Who can relate to that one? Yeah. So afraid of human law. But what about uh, the <laughs> ultimate authority that controls absolutely all the creation? Yeah, yeah it's, a good, it's a good reflection as well. Hey, Laura? Yeah, um, the thing that really, like, was wowed, wowed me was just to examine my attitudes because I'd previously not even thought about that before and that's a huge indication as to where I'm at. Yeah. Like, and, yeah, it's just opened up this whole way of looking at things like yeah. it's yeah that i find that really exciting yeah it's got goosebumps because <laughs> i feel like that's that's what it's about you know if you can get that from this everything we're teaching you to actually examine you know what is my deepest attitude belief feeling about all of these issues then you can start to really assess, am I in or out of harmony with this principle? If I go back to not, don't look at my action, don't look at what I just said, don't look at what I'd like to tell myself I really feel, no, look at what I really feel, um, then I'll be able to know if I'm in and out of harmony. If I'm out of harmony, I know where I can start. Yeah. Yeah. And that God measures that anyway. So even if we're telling ourselves porkies, yes. <laughs> like we can't get away with that. It's you just, just impossible. Can't. You just can't. <laughs> and you might be able to get away with it with like mum or your friend or whatever, but God's like, yeah, okay, sorry. if you want to go there. But <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you everyone for your participation in the homework. That's, it's really lovely to have those, for me to have those discussions with you. Um, so that about brings us to the close of our order principles. So by now you've seen that the foundation principles, they were the foundation of everything in the universe. In the order principles session, we focused you more on these principles and how they relate to you as a human soul. Um, and they, as you're about to learn, form the foundation of the human soul specific principles, which is going to be what you talk to Jesus about for the next two days. And they let us know more about God, more complexity about God, and they ensured, as I said at our closing the other day, that we're honoured as the highest creation. Hmm. All right. Our next uh, presentation is going to be Soul Specific Principles. And in that, I'm going to talk to you about, I'm just going to introduce you to everything that will be covered in the next couple of days. And as you'll see, it's all about your potentials. Um, so whereas the... Foundation principles, that is how it is. <laughs> the order principles, well, here's how you're affecting things. Here's where you fit into it all. This next two days is, well, here's what's available to you. Here's your potential. Um, yeah, which is why I said to you at, at our beginning of, of this talk, that's why it's kind of crucial info. And also, this info helps you to understand how to engage the higher laws, in the higher in the hierarchy which have more power, yeah. All right, so let's have a 10 minute break. We'll come back at half past 11 and I'll talk you through the introduction to Soul Specific Principles. Thank you guys.